name is Henry Shalhoun Jr. I'm from Queens, New York. I'm 31 and I'm currently a graduate student for uh, Middle Eastern Studies. Father of a seven-month-old, married for three years. Uh, I was born, born, born in Queens, born and raised. My father is what was a 48-year-old illiterate, couldn't read, couldn't write. He would use a just mark an X for his name, signing things. My mother dropped out of high school because I was in her stomach. So uh, it was not not your typical white privilege American upbringing. Lived off food stamps. The only reason we went to the church is for the for the soup kitchen and the free and the free breakfast. It was a uh, you know we weren't religious in that sense. Any anytime Christmas, the Easter. It was always, always fights break out. Anytime a holiday was around, instead of coming together, everybody fight. Father yelling at mother, mother yelling at father. We're all like, what's going on? So you know, we weren't, you know, religious in that, in that sense. I, I believed in God. I always have. It, it, it came in ebbs and flows. Like when I was a teenager, I thought Isa alayhi salam was an alien, you know, because he, no, he had no father, you know? So, uh. I never, I never went atheist or agnostic. I, I knew, I knew always, always, always that God was one. E e even in church, where because the Old Testament, Old Testament says, the sins of the son cannot be atoned by the father, and the sins of the father cannot be atoned by the son. So that Old Testament verse negates the Christian idea of of Jesus Islam dying for the sins of the world. You know, so, and e e even in the, when you go to the Bible, Isa Islam says, I have come to fulfill the law, not change. And while I'm here, not one period or tither will be taken away. So if he says that, how is he contradicting, you know, the law of Moses? So it, it just didn't make any sense, you know. And he, or when he's on the cross, he's like, "My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me?" So I asked my pastor, I was like, "Is he, is he talking to himself? Because if he's God and the Son of God, like it, it, it just like two and two is four, two and two is not nine. It, it just didn't make any sense." And and. These stories in the Old Testament, like Prophet Lut alayhi salam, he, he stuck for Allah, he slept with his daughters, you know, and David, Dawood alayhi salam, he, he sent the general off to, to die so he could marry the, these are, these are prophets of God. Uh, the, the one that really bugged me the most was uh, Prophet Noah alayhi salam. He, after the flood, the, the ark settled, and he got, stuck for Allah, he got drunk and passed out nude. And then his son saw him and were making fun of him. This is a prophet, like, if the prophet of God is getting drunk, why am I the prophet? I don't drink. I, I, I you know, I, I don't walk around naked. Like, why not? Why, 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 why ain't Joshua the prophet? Why, why, why'd you give it to Noah, alayhi salam? Like, I just, it doesn't make, it didn't make any sense. And, you know, churches, and I later on learned that Sunnis, Wahhabis, Salafis, don't like when you question. Toe the line, says what it says, don't worry about it, don't think. Just bow your head, bow your head, take the, take the holy water. Like, and as as a, I got my bachelor's degree in history, so as a as a pseudo historian, I need the primary sources. I need the secondary sources. I, I got to read it. In what context what was was this revealed or was it written? So I, I can't just toe the line, you know. Oh, okay, no, you know. And so yeah, I mean, I was nominally Christian, but I was forced to go to church. So I, like I I knew the Bible not inside and out, but you know, yeah. My father drilled it into my brain work with your brain and not your back because doing the construction work all his life bad knees bad back bad shoulders come winter time he'd be leg up with his cat uh, casting you know so he was always like use your brain work with your brain not your back so because it's he just he wanted us to you know i could have just been like oh i can read and write so uh you know i'm better than my father so no like push it uh, plus i don't like manual labor anyway <laughs> i'm actually the oldest of four i have two younger brothers and one sister and uh, my my middle brother, he uh, he he did two tours in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. So like, he uh, he like he knows about Karbala and Najaf, but he, he doesn't like. I actually I got him a Yusuf Ali translation of the Quran Karim, and he he put he he called me one day. He's like, you know, why is Prophet Solomon talking to ants? He he can't do that. I was like. Well, what are you talking about? He because when Prophet Suleiman, at least, you know, talking to the ants, I was like, I'm not gonna give you the tafsir because I'm not, I don't have the, I don't have the turban. So, but you know, I was like, don't you believe that God created Adam from the earth? Yeah. So why can't God let Suleiman, alayhi salam, talk to the ants? 
You know, he cared about every living thing that much. Though he didn't want to step on the ant. You know, and but even if even if he didn't even if he didn't talk to the ants, moral of the story is, treat everything in, in creation with mercy, just like as you would want to be treated. You know, but uh, he's he's very hard headed. He's very hard headed. So, uh, inshallah, he comes around. <laughs> well, I went to St. John's United Methodist Church in uh, Ridgewood, Queens, and at the time, the pastor of the church, it was a uh, Hispanic. So she would have one, one prayer service, one, you know, sermon, and she would say half of it in English and then half in Spanish, half in English. She would go back and forth between English and Spanish because it was their jamaat. It was so amalgamated with like whites, Germans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. So I didn't like it in that sense where it's like oh, I gotta hear this in Spanish now. Like, just why can't? Eventually they got two separate services. Thank God. But uh, I mean, I it, I was forced, and plus. I, I kind of felt like I was indebted to the church since they fed us, since like like I had gotten a summons because I was like hanging out in a park or whatever. My church paid for it, so I, I felt in debt to them. Not so much like I, I knew I knew I knew Trinity wasn't like I knew Trinity was false. I knew that was bogus. I knew I knew the way the prophets are just uh, portrayed in the Bible. I know that I know that was bogus, but I didn't know. Like the the most that the most I learned about Islam was in high school, uh, seventh century Prophet Muhammad, and uh, they took over half the world. And that was like that's all I knew about Islam, coming out of high school. But I always wanted I always knew God was one without no partners, no partners. God was one, and I knew I I believed in the virgin birth of Isa alayhi salam, but I didn't like if he if Isa alayhi salam is the best of creation. According to a Christian, why, why, why does God have to kill him to forgive me of my sins? Why can't I just be like, yeah, Rob, you know, I'm sorry. Like, it, it, didn't, it didn't make any sense. And when I was like, how is Jesus God and the Son of God? Like, he's, like it, it didn't make any sense. So you're telling me God was in the womb for nine months, and then God was so helpless that he, he, he needed his mother to suckle on. And then 30 years later, he dies, goes to hell, because in Christian theology, Isa alayhi salam was on the cross. And during the three days, he was in hell because he's, he's taking the punishment for all of us. And then he comes back and he's resurrected. Like, it doesn't make, why, would, why would God send, him, send himself to hell? So, so, and I would just, I'd be like, yeah, Pastor, Pastor Carmen, if, God, if Jesus is God in the flesh, like, why, it, just, it just logic logic dictates but it just it was one making, and so God was dead for three days who's running the universe I was like who's running the universe how am I breathing if, if, if God's dead you know I might as well just start reading Nietzsche God is dead you know it, oh and you know he, he came to earth to experience what it's like to be a human but if he's God he knows what it's like to be a human better than I do he created me like you know he, it just eventually they had enough and they were like yo you need to get out of here because I would just like so I'm like, oh yeah, you're right, Henry. Oh yeah, yeah. And so too many people. I just, I didn't get booted out. I just, I was like 17, and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing this. So I stopped going to church, and uh, I, I didn't, you know, I was homeless twice also in, in my early 20s. And there was a uh, the second second and last time I was homeless, I was walking to a bakery in Ridgewood. Just it was like 12:30, 1 o'clock in the morning. So you know they baked the breads for the for the following day. I would ask for like some rolls and some you know loaves, and I was just walking there. And I'm like, yeah, God, if you get me out of this situation, I will worship you however you want me to. However, however you want me to. So I did that dua. I didn't know it was a dua, but I, I supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The very next day, I walked from my old my old neighborhood to uh, City Field in, in uh, Elmhurst with the, with the New York Mets play. And after that was uh, Flushing. And there was a school that said, earn your GED and get an associate's degree at the same time. And I, I was a high school dropout. I dropped out in the 12th grade. And so I was like, I need a GED. Associates would be nice. So I went in, took the exam. I, I passed. So I, and then the next day, I got a job at a, a supermarket. And then one of my friends needed a job. So the parents came to me. He's like, can you get my son a job? I was like, I need a place to live. Oh, we'll, we'll rent you a room. Just get, him, get my son a job. I got him the job. And like, literally like 72 hours, 72 hours. I had a job. I was in school. And I had a place. And I was like, okay, so how do you want me to worship you? So when I was going for my associates, some uh, very good friends of mine from Bangladesh I met. And uh, it was funny because, actually, backtrack. The night before, I was with my friend Chris, 
And he was like, yo, you know Muslim women don't shave their legs? I was like, one, that's none of my business. And two, I don't believe you. So uh, the, the brothers from Bangladesh, I was like, do you women shave their legs? He's like, one, that's rude. And two, like, you know, we just started talking about Islam. And I was like, so what about Jesus? Like, oh, we believe in the virgin birth. Die for our sins? No, okay, okay. And so they handed me the Quran. And uh, for like the next three, four months, I had the Quran and the Bible just cross-referencing, cross-referencing. And I was like, Islam, Tawheed, oneness of God. Jesus is a prophet of Islam. He didn't die for the sins of the world. Like, this is, this is, this is what I believe already. This is in my nafs. So, it, like, it's... And wallahi, I wish I was making this up. I wish I was making all of this up because it just happened too fast, too fast, too fast. And I was just so, and then January 2006, I went to the Jamaica Muslim Center, JMC, with uh, Imam Shamsi Ali. I took my shahada. I was one of like three other people. And I took my shahada. Oh, Salaam alaikum, welcome to Islam. I, you know, I didn't get a prayer rug. I didn't get, I didn't get Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Oh, welcome to Islam. You're, you're a brand new baby now. All your sins before that. I didn't know which direction was Mecca. I didn't know how to pray. And like, the, the follow-up was so poor. They even whipped my shahada. I was still eating bacon. I was drinking beer, smoking pot. Like, I, di I didn't know. I got tattooed. I didn't know what was halal haram makroom, you know? So, from like 06, maybe until like, man, it's like a good five, six years I was in Islam. In Islam, but not even, I was a Muslim by name. And I dropped the pork. That was easy. Uh, you know, eventually it started coming together because but e even now you know uh, you know even now the the dua I made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm, st I'm still I'm still not doing my end and he's still doing his end for me like I'm in London on Al Hudayn TV like come on I, I, sh I, I know way more people who deserve to be in the seat right now I, I knew that I knew there was rules but I didn't know what were the rules and I see in Queens a lot of the masjids are like like, for instance, there's a big South Asian community, Bangladesh, Pakistan. And so their masjids are basically like club meds for like people from Dhaka, people from Islamabad, like the Kutbas or in Urdu or Bangla. So I would just sit there and I'm the only white guy. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm getting credit for this because I'm here, you know, my, my name's written down with the angels. But it's, you know, there's no follow up, man. No follow up. No follow up. And, you know, it, it's it sucks, you know, because then when I started learning, I did the same thing that I did in the church. I'm like, yeah, Imam, or yeah, Imam, like you know, the twelve caliphs. Who who the who the who, this hadith says there'll be twelve caliphs after me, all from Quraysh. Who who are the twelve? Uh, uh, I, the 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 oh, but this guy down the street can name me twelve, like that. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't listen to them. You know, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Muawiyah, Yazid. Da, da, da. I'm like, okay, sure. And you know, you know what's funny though? Well, when I took my Shahada, I, I asked about the Shia. I was like, who are the Shia? Don't worry about them. Just avoid them. Da, da, da. You know, it's, it's, it's in their Akita to lie. You know, they do Taki all the time. And I was like, whatever, fine. So I left the Shia thing alone. Come two and a half years ago, I was sitting in... Uh, my old, I don't even want to say it's mine, but I was in, I was in uh, Masjid Taqwa in, in bed Brooklyn. And I was, I was waiting for uh, the Adan to come in. And one of the, I wouldn't even say Maulana, that's giving, giving the man too much credit. There was somebody in there like just going off on this other brother because he had a Shia roommate. He was like, yo, you, they're Kafirs, you can't be rooming with him. Don't eat his meat, it's not halal, da da da, da. You know, they, they turn off the lights and, and with the women, the muta, da da da. da. And as, as he's going off, they, they worship Ali alayhi salam, astaghfirullah, like all these things he's rattling off, I'm like, there is no way in high heaven people actually believe that. There's no, there's no way that somebody's Akita. No way. And so what I did was, I went, not really, basically down the street, so Masjid al Bayt, Islamic Guidance Center, in the uh, Atlantic Avenue, by the Barclay Center. And I just, I embedded myself at the Shia Masjid for two weeks. Question after question after question after question. I was there for like hours, for two weeks straight. And then they gave me books and I read it. And so I read, then I was guided. And the, the way Dr. Chijani went about it, how he would only take hadith that both sides agree on, and of course the Quran. So I was like, you know, that sounds, that sounds pretty foolproof. So I did it. And I, I would just...